So in this chapter, we are going to look at linear regression and correlation. But since this chapter has the word linear in it, maybe a good idea to review the linear functions. And by the way, props on this book. A lot of times statistics books will say, and today we are going to take a look at linear functions. Please go back and review all of the things you know about linear functions, which is, um, <laughs> that's, that's an incredibly, incredibly deep and wide pool of knowledge. So this, um, this book takes a very nice guided approach to reviewing what's going to be most important. And in fact, it probably goes over a little too much, but this is video and, uh, <laughs> the, and the homework that accompanies it uh, will actually kind of give you a good um, heads up on what you're going to need to do in this unit. So let's get started. So in this chapter we're going to express correlation or the relationship between two values. Alright, so we um, have two items related with a linear relationship. Now the two items are going to be um, talked about as X and Y. So there's going to be an item X. Let's say X was uh, the price of a soda, and Y would be the revenue generated by that soda. So the price of the soda is related to how much that soda makes for you. Like what if you charged, um, let's say you had a vending machine at an amusement park. What if you charged a dollar for each 20 ounce soda? Well, you know, you'd make a lot of money but run out of soda pretty quickly. Um, what if you charged five dollars a drink? Well, you probably wouldn't run out, but you probably also wouldn't sell 20 ounce bottles of soda unless it was really, really hot outside. So what we're looking for in these cool uh, correlation problems is we're actually looking to see if does the amount or variation as we change it does the amount or variation in X have an effect with an A here effect on Y and we're always going to be looking at X and changing X and its effect on Y and we're going to discuss a little vocabulary on the next page that deals with this. So first of all let's just kind of remind ourselves of some basic linear functions. Now have we seen Y equals MX plus B? Well of course you have. If you got into a statistics class you've had slope and Y intercept before. But I want to show you that in statistics they also commonly use this A and B instead of M and B. Um, in fact, you're going to see this in two separate um, separate orientations. So what we're going to do is take a look at what's highlighted in yellow. Okay, so the M and the A, and in this case the letter B. The slope isn't actually determined by the letter I'm using. The slope is determined by which letter is in front of the variable. So everything in yellow, everything in yellow is the slope. Okay, so the slope is identified by what's in yellow. And what you may want to do is draw arrows to it. But the slope here is the number, or the coefficient, but let's just call it a number here, the number in front of x and we mean literally right in front, the number that's multiplying x. And this is, the, as many of you have heard dozens of times before, is the rise over run of the line. It's how much up it's going versus how much over to the right it's going. Therefore, if the slope is negative, it's actually falling and still running. We're not gonna change both directions because two negatives make a positive in multiplication and division. So the number by itself, so I'm going to highlight this in green, so the number by itself in these two examples, the letter B in this example, the letter A, those two numbers, those numbers by themselves is called the y-intercept. Okay, because every linear equation is going to cross the x or the y-axis and we're not going to talk about vertical lines so we're gonna every 
non-vertical line is going to cross the y-axis. And the y-intercept, again, is the number alone. Okay, it's the number that's all by itself, the number alone. And the notation for that is usually 0, comma b. And the b is then the value of the y-intercept. But that gets a little confusing. I don't like this uh, notation for it, because what if the equation is a plus bx? Then it would be 0, comma a. So this is something we have to break in our head, which is you can't just say the slope is always m and the slope is always, or the y-intercept is always b, because they can change the letters on you, and they will, okay? Because what's going to happen is that in this unit, we're going to be refamiliarizing ourselves with y equals mx plus b, but then, as you see in the fourth section, we're going to segue over to this as our standard notation. So again, don't get used to the letters telling you what they are. Get used to the positions of the letters. If the letter is by itself, it's the y-intercept. Um, if the slope, if the letter, I'm sorry, is multiplied by the x, that's the slope. So let's do some examples here on this first page here. So this is going to be y equals, I'm just going to give you this equation here, 2 thirds x minus 1. So here our y-intercept, or the number by itself, is negative 1 or plus negative 1. So that means we're going to start with a dot at this spot at negative 1. Now the slope is 2 thirds. And since the slope is 2 thirds from that dot, we're going to go up 2 and over 3. Up 2 and over 3, like that. And that is going to connect the dots in a straight line. Try to be as straight as possible. It's a little tough here on my uh, tablet. But then from that dot, you're going to go up 2 and over 3, and the plot and the dots continue. Okay, so everything continues. Now, if we want to go left here, we'd have to double both or double uh, negative both of those, so down to left 3, because negative 2 over negative 3 is the same thing as 2 thirds, and negative 2 over negative 3. But most people, once they see two dots put on there, they can follow the pattern in either direction. So, let's graph the following lines. And I'm going to give you these lines here, or they may be already written into your worksheet. But the lines I want you to graph are y equals negative 5 halves, x plus 6, y equals 4x, and y equals 2. Now the first thing we should always try to identify is the y-intercept, which I label in green here. So the y-intercept here is 6. So I'm going to put a dot here at 6. Now I'm going to talk about the slope, which is negative 5 halves. Now you may wonder, since the negative is usually going to be right in the dead center, where should I put it? Should I put it in the numerator or denominator? Well, most people put it in the numerator. That way you can say, okay, I'm moving 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. So down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. So this is going to make our straight line, as straight as I can try to draw it here on this tablet, like so. Alright, so there is my correct slope and y-intercept. Now if you're looking at the second example here, where's the y-intercept? There's no y-intercept. There's a no uh, plus a whole number. So technically it's plus zero. So our y-intercept, if absent, is zero. Because we would never see in a book 4x plus zero, and I would never want written on a test y equals 4x plus zero, because that's not fully simplified. It's like saying ATM machine. Uh, the M stands for machine, so you're really saying automatic teller machine machine. It's just not a simplified sentence. So we do have a slope, though. The slope is 4, but you may be curious as to how it moves, right? Because um, we have, slope is defined as rise over run, so a lot of times I see people going up 4 and over 4. Sometimes they just go straight up 4 and make a vertical line. Well, that's not true. This is really 4 over 1. If you don't see a fraction in your um, in your slope, you may want to try to put one there. 
So this goes up 4 over 1, which makes a nice steep straight line, but also if we have to go backwards, this would be down 4 left 1. Okay. So, in this third example here, you can see that I don't actually have a, uh, I have a y-intercept, because there's a number all by itself, but I don't have a slope. I don't have any number with a letter in front of it. So what do I do if I start at 2? Well, just like in the previous problem, if you don't see something, it's 0. So in the first, in this problem here, 4x plus 0 meant that the y-intercept is 0. But here I have 2 plus 0x. So the slope is 0. So I'm going to move up 0 and over, well, an infinite amount, because this is a horizontal line. You will have to know the equation for horizontal lines because this first relationship in blue is a negative correlation relationship, where you're going to see a line that goes down. The second example here is a positive correlation. As x goes up, y goes up, so you'll see these examples here. And this horizontal line is how we will describe um, when there's absolutely no relationship, like maybe the number of shoes you own and um, you know how many sisters you have. There's no correlation there, like one doesn't um, affect the other, so, these, so you'd have absolutely no relationship there. So again, negative relationships is when x goes up and y goes down, positive relationships when x goes up and y goes up, and then no correlation is when uh, you just have a flat line. So for these last three problems on this video, I want you to try to pause the video and try to, you know, plot some points and then write the equations. And I've picked some pretty tricky ones just to see if I can trap you a little bit into some common mistakes people make when reviewing your linear functions. And I do wish to say that this is a review video, so I will um, kind of expect you to know what's on this one and the next video going forward for statistics. But if you need more review, obviously you can come to me for questions. I can probably send you to, to several videos I've made on in my college algebra class. So this is my um, line that's going down. So it's probably best to maybe plot, first of all, the y-intercept right there. So let's just mark that with a green dot. And then I have to figure out my rise over run. So it looks like I'm going down 1 and over 1. So my uh, y-intercept is negative 2, which I can write as minus 2. And my slope is down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, or negative 1 over 1. That is my slope, down 1 over 1. But if you try typing that into um, XYZ homework or any kind of homework system, they're not going to take negative 1 over 1x, it's going to say you're wrong, even though literally you are going down 1 over 1. And before you send me an email asking um, why you got the problem wrong, is because it's not simplified. 1 divided by 1 is 1, so this is technically negative 1x. And negative 1x is redundant, because if you have an x, then you have only one of them. So this is a very sloppy um, uh, mathematical technique where you just write negative 1x. Proper college level writing would never put a 1 in front of an x even if it's negative. So don't leave 1x or negative 1x there because it's not good math grammar. You know there's grammar in math? Yeah, there's grammar in math which allows you to write plus negative 2 as the same way as subtract 2. But it's poor math grammar just like you know, not punctuating your sentences or not starting with a capital letter to leave something with a negative 1 in front of the x or a 1 in front of the x. So please don't do that. I'll show you another math grammar problem here which will help you in writing things in on XYZ homework. First of all, note that we have a y-intercept of 0. So please don't ever put plus 0 in your answer. Now what we're going to do is going to go up and over. So we're going to go up 3 and over 1. So we're moving up 3 and over 1 for my slope. This is another math grammar problem. We don't write our ending answers with 3 over 1. And if you had a teacher who said, oh yeah, you can leave it that way, well, they did you a disservice. It's kind of like having a really easy English teacher before the advanced lit class. Um, you may have had a good time, but you didn't really get what you needed for the next course. 3 divided by 1 is 3, so the slope is 3x. 
So if I see y equals 3 over 1x plus 0, please note that I will be marking that down, just because it's just not at the college level here. So y is equal to 3x, just that, 3x, because 3x plus 0 is just 3x. 3 divided by 1 is 3. Let's get our math written in good math grammar. Now, our last equation here, the reason why people make a mistake on it is sometimes they put in a slope. There is no slope. The slope here is zero. It's going up zero and over, well, just count as many spaces as you want. It's going up zero over two, up zero over three, up zero over five, and zero divided by any number is zero, except we're not dividing zero by zero. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> y is equal to negative four, yes? just negative 4, not negative 4x, not anything else but the negative 4. So don't forget the negative like I almost did. All right, thank you for watching the video and please stay tuned for the more important second part of this video where we're going to be diving into some linear elements of review that you'll need for uh, this unit.